Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here in Northern Virginia. We're covering the Surface Navy Association's 30th Annual Conference and Trade Show. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo DRS, and we're over here at the Atlas North America stand, uh, which is a Tyson Krupp company, to talk to Mark Rios, who's the Director of Business Development at uh, Atlas uh, North uh, America. Uh, and uh, a renowned surface uh, warrior, retired U.S. Navy uh, captain uh, and, and friend. Sir, great seeing you again. As well, you as well. And I wouldn't say renowned. I would say I, I enjoyed my 30 years of service and I'm and now I'm in, trying my luck in the private sector. Uh, that, that's right. Uh, but but uh, in, in your day, you were known to, to drive a ship like you stole it. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, well well done. Uh, we, were, we were talking about the fineries of, uh, of unrep uh, technique uh, a little bit earlier. But let's talk about something more important. The United States Navy is looking at a, at a frigate. There's a very important competition uh, that's going on. LCS is in the mix, both Austell and uh, the Finn County Erie Lockheed team. Uh, are, are out there with an evolved version of the littoral, littoral combat ship, uh, but there are also other competitors. Finn Cantieri is, is bidding the Frem. Navantia and Bath Ironworks are talking about, about uh, it being in the mix as well, and you guys are very interested in it, and ThyssenKrupp, the grandparent company, right, because you're part of Atlas and Atlas is part of ThyssenKrupp, is one of the world's leading export ship makers with a truly modular design in the Miko line. Uh, and talk to us about the A200 that you guys are going to be bidding here. What are its attributes? Why is it you guys think that's the right ship for the U.S. Navy and why it's going to appeal to, to the U.S. Navy? We're delighted to participate in the Navy's future frigate conceptual design and we have a parent ship design, the Miko A200, of which uh, the, we've built six so far to date uh, to South Africa and to Algeria. It's a proven frigate warship design from the keel up, survivability, uh, minimum manning, and, and as you alluded to, a fantastic modular design so that the ship can be upgraded in its combat systems, its weapons fits, its uh, computer uh, basis, can be upgraded much more simply than in our classic Navy design where ships spend interminable months in overhaul getting, getting uh, upgrades. So uh, a proven design, satisfied customers, actual costs of our, our, our variant, and then some very unique design features to reduce uh, IR signature to reduce radar reflectivity, um, uh, a very exciting design. And so we're happy to uh, submit this design to the Navy for consideration, and uh, we think we're in the hunt. We have, a, we have a really good program, and we're hoping to get an award to continue this conceptual design development and help inform the Navy on what their ultimate requirements will be for the future frigate of the 21st century. Um, and, you know, and uh, I, I know that one of the things, it is a ship that's also um, uh, an anti-submarine uh, uh, configuration that also has uh, radiated noise is an important thing. Talk to us about what some of the baseline features of the ship are. You know, what are its endurance? Navy has talked about the importance of endurance in its next class of ships, which is uh, welcome to a lot of folks uh, to reduce um, underway replenishments, uh, given that, you know, your oiler and auxiliary fleets are going to become targeted, mm -hmm. uh, especially in any long-range fight, uh, and then a whole bunch of short-range ships are finding themselves unable to operate at distance. Talk to us a little bit about the baseline uh, uh, features of the ship, the capabilities that you're going to be bringing from day one. Well, the, the PEO LCS and the program manager, PMS 515 of the frigate program, were very uh, excited, I shouldn't say that, they, were, they really pushed the point of the ship's endurance, of being able to uh, um, uh, have a six, 7,000 mile range at 15 knots, which we can do. They were very concerned about having a Mark 41 VLS launcher to be able to support uh, the missile capacity needed for the future frigate. We can do that. They also were concerned that they, we, could, we should berth as many as uh, 200 people on board this ship, uh, not just ship's company, but also embark detachments for special missions. We can do that as well. And then finally, they were very concerned about, the, as you suggested, the self-radiated self and self-acoustic noise of the ship, keeping that down low so uh, to be able to uh, uh, be more stealthy around enemy submarines. And we have proven uh, uh, results on that from our previous designs, and we can continue to modify the designs to make them even, even uh, to satisfy the Navy's requirements from the, our parent design, the Miko A200 ship. Um, let me uh, ask on the propulsion train. You know, everybody's been looking at hybrid, electric motors, anything that does make uh, a ship both uh, more efficient mm -hmm. but also quieter. What are some of the features you guys have? Because you guys are very different in that you have a conventional shaft-driven prop uh, layout, uh, drivetrain, 
but you also have a water jet on it. So talk to us a little bit about what that propulsion train setup for you guys is like. So this is not a, a, an electric drive ship. It's more of a classic diesels, uh, uh, diesel powered ship that go to uh, power the propellers, but it also has one gas turbine engine that uses a water jet drive. So when you when there's when it's a need for either high acceleration, like in combat, or if you really need the top speed to get from one place to another, besides the diesels, the gas turbine can be engaged in order to do that. The, the ship can also run on gas turbine alone if that's if that's necessary, or if you want to give the diesels a rest. And uh, also talk to us, you know, you said about the 200 person uh, accommodation. Uh, mission modules are something that's very important. Uh, both of the LCS ships are uh, configured for that. And everybody does it in a different way. How do you guys handle that multi-mission modularity? You know, what sort of capacity do you have to, to accept, you know, is, is it a connex bolted somewhere or is it something you guys integrate right into the ship? I think there, there's more that has to be done in the study there, but I think the, the idea is that the ship should be able to handle unmanned surface vessels, the launch and recovery of unmanned surface vessels, which can be used for anything from mine hunting to added security to perhaps using other sensors to extend the ship's uh, um, uh, eyes as well as combat capability and this will be part of, uh, of the things that we study in the conceptual design. As far as the ship being able to operate, the ship can operate with approximately 120 people. So those additional racks and spaces are for perhaps uh, if you were to have a Coast Guard law enforcement detachment or maybe there are other detachment of Navy or joint people necessary to accomplish a mission. And that's, that's where that initial capacity, uh, that, uh, that increased capacity is. As well as the capacity, for example, for a uh, helicopter detachment. Or, or other embarked staff, or even a marine detachment, which, which the Marines are looking at distributed operations uh, increasingly. You know, you mentioned, Mark, my, uh, mine warfare. We talked about that a little bit last year. Very big focus of the Navy. Um, you know, we talked to the Smittic commander, uh, Admiral, uh, Rear Admiral John Wade. Talk to us a little bit about what you guys are doing. You know, very crowded space. Everybody's paying attention to this space. Uh, a lot of our allies are good at it, and so a lot of it is, is overseas technology that's coming over to us. Talk to us about what it, how, how you're trying to help the Navy scratch that itch. Well, uh, Atlas, Atlas Electronic has several different mine countermeasure systems available that are used in many NATO navies and, and even uh, navies throughout the rest of the world. What I would like to see and what our company is trying to tout is instead of, instead of spending years of development in a new uh, MCM system, is there a way we can leverage present systems that are available in the world, and even if some upgrades or modifications are required for the U.S. use, we think we can get these to the, our Navy customer, to the fleet, far faster and far cheaper than designing a brand new program from the ground up. And uh, these are the kind of incremental improvements we need to make in order to improve our capacity and capability in mine countermeasure operations. For example, with the, the CFOX mine neutralizer or uh, other types of unmanned surface vessels which can be used to, to pull sonars to find mines, to be able to launch mine neutralizers from an unmanned vessel and reduce the risk uh, to our people. There's many different options that are on the table now and we should bring these to, to the fleet far sooner uh, than developing brand new start programs. Mark Rios of Atlas North America. Sir, it's always a pleasure seeing you, the and thanks very much for the time. The pleasure is all on this side.